Again, good afternoon sa inyo. We are just um medyo late tayo na start, no? But nonetheless, welcome everybody. I'd like to also check up with attendees if you clearly see my screen and also mas maayos niyo ako naririnig, kindly type in number one sa ating webinar, okay? Type in number one so that I can also check, no, before I start. Okay, um... Let me ask also our chat moderator to turn on yung ating access sa ating chat. But I also received some feedback sa ating attendees. No? Thank you very much, Sir Franklin. So I'll just start. No? Welcome everyone for um this webinar. And also thank you for spending your Thursday time no? with us by attending this webinar entitled FMETF 101 with FIRST Metro Securities and FAMI where you learn more about the first and only ETF in the country, the FIRST Metro Exchange Traded Fund. So to introduce myself, I am Isnayer Diram Patton, but you can also call me Tara for short. I am the Mindanao Business Development and Market Education Associate from FIRST Metro Securities, the stock brokerage house of the Metro Bank Group, right? Again. So for those na bagos sa ating session, no, especially with FundSmart Learning Series where we partner with our FundSmart partner, I'd like to introduce our company first, Metro Securities. is dedicated to financial literacy and creating awareness of investment opportunities that empower individuals together with institutions as well to attain their financial goal. We envision to be the largest and also the most trusted Philippine investment solutions partner. It's my honor and pleasure to serve you today as your host. So to briefly share with you, no, ano yung maginagawa namin usually with financial literacy? We usually do our face-to-face -face and also on-site sessions uh, before. But right now, we're actually doing hybrid. So medyo less na yung restrictions. So we're able to do um, some of the sessions on site na. But nonetheless, most of our sessions are in webinar. So we are regularly invited and collaborate with also different institutions just like the public sector. We also have the academic institutions, uh, university or colleges, and the private companies. It's amazing how technology together with social media as well to enable us to add value wherever we are located. Okay? Again, some of our public webinars as well. Okay? I think some of you who are those na mga repeat attendees, no, may nakikita ako sa mga uh, participants natin. But nonetheless, this is the data for the stock market investor profile here in the Philippines. So we are over 100 million in population. But in terms of stock market accounts, no, meron tayong around 1.71 million stock market accounts. And out of that, meron tayong 1.2 online accounts. But as you can see here, around 75% are locally employed and there has been gaining interest from our overseas Filipino workers and even yung mga students natin. The majority are still from Metro Manila at 81.5%. But as you can see, uh, medyo kumikip up pa yung the rest of the country. No? So we have Luzon at 10.7%. We also have Visayas at 3.7%. And in Mindanao, Actually, I'm residing here dito sa Davao, no? is at 2.5%. So medyo malayo tayo in terms of the area and the number of stock market investors here in the Philippines. No? So I'd like to ask our attendees for those, especially mga bago dito sa series natin, meron na ba tayo stock market trading account or any investment account already? So can you type in yes sa ating chat box? If meron po tayong stock market investment account or any investment account kindly type in yes sa ating chat box okay let me see yeah you also have a yes um again so major maritime issues with our chat box no but slowly our chat moderator will be fixing those. But anyways, um, thank you very much for giving me the feedback. And also, if my insights tayo gagaya nito, no, please um, just share it with us also. Thank you very much. So while our chat moderator is also fixing some of the Zoom issues, I'll just move forward. Okay? 
Ayan. So, that's why we have two ladies here from the first Metro Asset Management. This, especially, these are very beautiful. No? To empower us more in handling investments this Women's Month. Okay? They will share and discuss more about the FMETF that mirrors the Philippine Stock Exchange Index or PSEI. We are so honored to have them both okay the first speaker for today's webinar is the investment analyst of first metro asset management incorporation miss misha graduated with a bachelor's degree in humanities and finished her master's degree in industrial economics from university of asia and the pacific she is also a certified treasury professional through the ateneo graduate school of business bp institute of banking so before she joined fami she was a research analyst for a joint venture project between the First Metro Investment Corporation and in University of Asia and Pacific, focusing on macroeconomy and fixed income. She recently joined First Metro Asset Management Incorporation in October 2023 as an investment officer. As an economist with a strong research background, she now specializes in analyzing the macroeconomic landscape and providing investment recommendations. Without further ado, let's all welcome Ms. Misha Nicole Merino. Hi, Ms. Misha. Hello, Tara. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for the kind introduction. Let me share over my screen. Can you now see my screen? Yes, Ms. Risha, thank you. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Misha and I am the Investment Officer and Analyst from the Investments and Research Team of FAMI. For our market review in the equities market, so it is off to a good start in 2024 with the PSEI currently consolidating within the 6850 to the 6970 range, translating to a positive return between the 6 to 7% year-to-date from the 2023 year-end level of 6450, exceeding the 2023 full-year performance of negative 1.8%. Today, it closed at 6967 level. With better risk sentiment globally, several indices are posting positive gains year-to-date, Notably, Japan's Nikkei stock index reached an all-time high above the 4,000 level last March 5, powered by semiconductor-related stocks as earnings results fueled optimism and demand for foreign, uh, from foreign investors. Meanwhile, the PCOM index is still one of the best-performing markets in the region, up by 6.7% year-to-date as of March 12, due to earnings report broadly in line with consensus and sustained foreign inflows. So foreign investors have been net buyers so far, with 2024 year-to-date net inflows of $246.4 million as of March 12. This is a significant improvement compared to previous years, where the market registered net foreign selling of 53.7 billion pesos in 2023, as well as 68.1 billion in 2022. We also attribute the negative sentiment around China's economy as one of the contributors to the sustained foreign inflows into the Philippines. So investors continue to assess economic and policy outlook in China. The negative outlook is mainly due to the housing market slump, with home sales down by 40% in 2023 and 20, uh, and 70% for the first two months in 2024. Take note that the property sector contributes about 25% to China's GDP. So the slump in the property sector heavily weighs down on its economy. Additionally, the dampened confidence was also reflected in the inflationary figures, with January inflation posting its steepest fall in 14 years to negative 0.8% year-on-year. This means that consumer spending power is weak, and a real estate slump has dented confidence, holding people back from buying big ticket items. 
lower consumer demand forces businesses to mark down their products as well. Although we saw an uptick in February figures for the first time in four months to 0.7% increase year on year, this is mainly due to the seasonal spending during the Lunar New Year holidays. Going back, another contributor to the increased demand is our cheap valuation, as the market has been trading close to two standard deviations below the historical average PE of 16 times, reaching a low of 9.46 times. Despite the upward momentum we've seen in the equities market so far, our valuations show that there's still further upside in the equities market. Despite red-hot inflation and external pressures, the Philippine economy continues to post robust economic growth as it registered the fastest growth for the full year of 2023 at 5.6% versus its neighbors. On the flip side, investors are still concerned over our inflation. With the latest inflation figures of 3.4% in February, We've seen inflation reversing to the upside after four consecutive months of downtrend. This was particularly due to higher food prices, uh, specifically rice and meat, as well as oil prices. Although it is within the government target of 2 to 4%, we remain cautious as inflationary pressures are still present, such as higher transportation costs, higher, ele higher electricity rates, as well as higher global food and oil prices. As mentioned, rising crude oil prices posed a concern where we saw Brent oil prices averaging $80 per barrel because of the heightened uncertainty over the Red Sea crisis. Ongoing risks of supply disruptions to crude oil prices are still present. Although we expect crude oil prices to rise into the mid $80 per barrel range in the coming months, we expect downward price pressures will emerge in the second quarter of 2024 as global oil inventories generally increase during this time. We have seen rice prices skyrocket to levels not seen since 2008, thanks largely to India's rice export ban and the impacts of El Nino lowering food productivity. Although rice prices have declined, it is still almost twice the amount versus two years ago. On a positive note, the BSP said that the government secured a contract with India so that we can still access their rice supply despite the export ban. The Philippines also has an agreement with Vietnam to secure rice supply over the next five years, which is very encouraging. Additionally, President Marcos also extended the validity of the Executive Order 10, which lowers the tariff rates for rice, pork, and corn until the end of 2024, to alleviate some price pressures brought about by El Nino. On the monetary policy outlook, the BSP kept their policy rates unchanged at 6.5% in their last monetary board meeting in February. The risks to inflation outlook have receded, but remain tilted towards the upside. BSP Remolona said in an interview last week that it is still too early to cut key interest rates even if the inflation data is within the 2 to 4%. He also noted that it is too soon to declare victory over inflation as the macroeconomic landscape remain uncertain. We see the BSP will likely move after the Fed as they continue to keep a healthy interest rate differential with U.S. policy rates. Expectations on an early rate cut in March, which is next week, have already tempered with the probability of a March rate cut plummeting to almost 0% from an 80% probability at the start of the year due to still elevated inflation. Recently, Fed Chair Powell noted that it will be likely appropriate to dial back interest rates sometime this year. However, the Fed still needs more confidence that inflation rates are moving toward the central bank's long-term goal of 2% before they pivot towards rate cuts. Meanwhile, two Fed presidents have toned down their rate cut expectations, so Atlanta's Bostic favors delivering the first Fed rate cut in the third quarter uh, this year, later than the futures projection for a June cut. Meanwhile, Minneapolis Kashkari expect just one to two rate cuts this year, compared to uh, three from the previous Fed stock plot. So the main question is, does the equity market still have the legs to go up? 
in our view, yes, macro in as macro uh, fundamentals remain resilient. So one of the structural drivers is our OFW remittances, which reached an all-time high last year, amounting to $37.2 billion, up by 3% from 2022. We expect remittances to remain healthy as dependents of OFWs will require more funds to cover the higher costs of goods. Meanwhile, strong OFW remittances coupled with higher inflows from IT BPO sector will help sustain consumer demand. We continue to see solid household consumption as household final consumption expenditure grew by 5.3% year on year in the fourth quarter of 2023, despite high inflation. So household consumption accounts for 70% of our GDP. Another driver would be higher tourist arrivals for this year. According to DOT, around 5.5 million international visitors entered the country for the full year of 2023, which is higher than the government's target of just 4.8 million international visitors. Even though we've seen net foreign buying in the recent weeks, foreign ownership remains low compared to previous historical levels. This suggests that there's still potential volume coming in from foreign investors, providing more momentum for the market goal. According to the survey from our brokers, they see the local bores to end between the 6-7 level to 8-3 level to an average of 7,500 with an EPS growth of 5% to 22.6%. The last column shows that brokers are also forecasting robust growth for the Philippines to an average of 6% for 2024. Meanwhile, inflation is seen to settle at 3.6% for the full year of 2024 within the government target of 2 to 4%. With the BSP cutting the policy rates with a total of 100 basis points in 2024, as well as 100 basis points in 2025. Just to summarize our outlook, we see a 10 to 15% possible upside for the equities market to the 7,100 to the 7,400 level in 2024, albeit at a reduced pace as the 7,000 level resistance remains strong. We expect some headwinds to happen in the first half of 2024 due to inflation concerns, policy rate direction, as well as geopolitical uncertainties. However, the Philippine economy remains resilient as structural drivers remain intact, such as higher OFW remittances, growth in the IT BPO sector, more tourists coming in, as well as stable unemployment rate all of which leads to higher consumer spending, which contributes around 70% of our GDP. Another contributor would be the positive spillover from better global risk sentiment as investors bank on the soft landing of the U.S. as its economy continues to be solid with a tight labor market. Additionally, from the global scene, the investors from China are now diversifying their portfolios and are looking at different markets such as the Philippines. All in all, these factors help sustain foreign inflows, which anchors the upward momentum in the equities market. That's it for our market review. Thanks for listening in. Thank you, Misha. And of course, no, um, she does share more about the outlook and how about more about the features of the FM ETF. Our second speaker will share more about the reasons why we should consider in investing FM ETF through the features. Please welcome Ms. Ruth Chaneco. Hi, Ms. Ruth. Hi, Tara. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you. I'd like to thank Misha for providing us a complete update, especially about equities and uh, why we should begin accumulating on equities. I think our audience are now considering is FM ETF suitable to me as an investor. And with that, the next thing that I will discuss would be some of the things that you need to know or consider whether uh, you want to invest in FM ETF or you want to begin accumulating or do cost averaging. Okay, so the first one is if you want to trade or invest in stocks, but you want the, to diversify your risk okay, without really uh, doing tedious investment analysis. Okay, so it's like delegating 
the uh, the workload, the leg work um, in terms of selection of stocks to a professional fund manager. The next one is if you are also considering to trade or invest in most stable stock companies here in the Philippines, please look at the municipal. Next is if you also are willing to invest in the market for at least five years or you have a long term investment price. Okay, so as we understand, a lot of individuals have put particular goals, and therefore there's also a time rise or uh, attached to that. So the key is if you're looking for long-term investment horizon, um, this is a suitable investment instrument. So that matches your cash flow. Next, the last one is you're aware of the volatilities that is present in the market, is especially the prices of our stock. But we still want to invest in instruments because it generates higher return. So definitely, an ETF suits you as an investor. So underline on the word investor. Okay. So as we realize, um, most of our participants here are generating income from our employment and students doing active trading. So that's what people are doing. The role of First Metro Exchange Traded Fund is for us to satisfy the person of our income in an instrument that generates income. Okay, so it's something that you put your money in and you don't need to uh, monitor it on an hourly or daily basis. Okay, so what is the first metro exchange rate that It gives you the combination of a mutual fund that is traded like a stock. Okay, so think of it as a mutual fund, an equity fund, that allows you to diversify. Okay, so it gives you the diversification of a managed fund and at the same time, the liquidity of the stock. Okay, so in a single trade, single trade, okay, single security, you invest in a basket of 30 stock companies here in the Philippines. So there you go. That's your first metro. Philippine exchange, equity exchange traded fund. So actually in the Philippines, there, this is the first and the only exchange traded fund right now. Okay, and um, you'll be able to enjoy the similar returns of the Philippine Stock Exchange Index without the uh, management or without having to actively manage a portfolio. Okay, so, um, the first metro Philippine Exchange Traded Fund is a mutual fund that aims to mirror the performance or the movement of the PSCI. So the opening and the close. That's what we uh, want to track or to mirror. And that's why um, this type of uh, exchange-traded fund is actually considered also an index fund. It's so that the pricing is uh, intraday, okay? Because it is uh, by bought and sold by us, okay? So PSEI is composed of the 30 companies selected, okay, under the PSEI, uh, based on the liquidity, free float, and market capitalization. So technically, we buy F and ETF shares through trading instantly diversify into these 30 companies. I'll talk about these 30 later on. Okay, so imagine if you want to build your own portfolio. Let's say you decided, no, uh, I'm just going to build my own portfolio. I'm just going to mirror the uh, PSTI. So how much would it take you? You actually need a million pesos at least okay, to buy each of the 30 companies, considering the minimum board lot requirements. And at the same time, construction may be easy, constructing your portfolio may be easy, but the legwork would be the daily monitoring to rebalance the weights. Okay? So every day the weights may change, and that means for you to perfectly closely track how the PSPI would perform, you have to rebalance it on a daily basis. Okay? So investing in the first metro exchange traded fund saves you that legwork and uh, at the same time also gives you or charges you for a less, less cost. Okay, so the last one that we also want to uh, share here is that just like any stock okay, that is listed and traded in the PST, the price is also transparent. So you can see the intraday and also post the I have indicative net as value per share at the end of the day. And from there, if you look at the movements of the NAVPS on a daily basis, you would see that the movement so uh, closely tracks how the PSI moves on a daily basis. 
Okay, so what is the probability or probability of the point? So the point is invested in the TFEI. It's currently uh, the size is about 2.2 billion pesos and its volatility is 16.8. Okay, so if you notice here, we uh, ensure that the traffic error is low because we want to mirror the BSDI close. You will also see the holdings in terms of the uh, sectors. Okay, so here you can definitely determine already that it's uh, diversified in different sectors. So not, no uh, particular concentration in a single sector. And this is the top 30 companies. In the movie. So these are just codes, but um, the, the good thing for the, for the rest of the index funds, we may not be posting the uh, top 30, but for the first metro exchange traded fund, we can actually go to www.firstmetroetf.com.th and you can definitely see the daily changes in the update uh, or the updates in the weights. We so you reflect that in the weights. Okay, so these numbers are just rounded up, but these are the biggest okay, top 30 companies in the OTA. So what saves you from the, uh, the legwork here is that you don't need to do all the studies, the investment analysis in each company because it's ready to useful. Now, if you're wondering how has this one have performed in the past, okay, so you're seeing uh, from 2014 to 20, uh, up to the latest, okay, so up to uh, yesterday, and uh, it closely tracks the index, okay, the movement, but at the same time, there are cases where they also may outperform because um, of the dividends of these companies. And also, uh, just relating to what uh, Misha had shared earlier, there's definitely some legs still, okay, if you start accumulating as uh, any time soon, okay? So, to have the, uh, my presentation, I just want to share some of the uh, costs okay, here and uh, just comparing it with the other index funds and other actively managed funds. And when we say index, actively managed funds, we're talking about mutual funds and also UITF. Why is it cost efficient? Because of the low management fee is 0.5% compared to other index funds and actively managed funds. And therefore, if you want to compare it with you building your own portfolio, you can definitely see a different trade. Now, other costs to consider is, well, there are no entry fees and there are no holding period that you need to consider. There are still the stocks, so you might have to consider broker fees on the buying and selling of All right, and um, just to cap, okay, so to really cap my presentation, here is a study that we made um, on the FMDF performance, okay, so this is in the past five years, we're going back to 2017, and the first column you would see that's for FMDF year end, okay, so every year, so 20, at the end of 2017, 2018, 2019, up to the year to date, okay, versus the PSDIs, it just shows that it mimics, it closely tracks how the PSDI outperform, okay. However, the last column shows that what if an individual decides not to invest in the beginning or at any time, just to a regular investing, okay? So this is an individual who sets 5% of his portfolio every month and investing by monthly, uh, depending on the market, okay? So it's about 2,000 pesos by month. And the individual would buy more if the prices are lower, okay? Because his cap is 2,000 pesos. And look at, I want you to look at it and uh, make a reflection on whether it's really helpful to do cost averaging, and you would definitely in 2023, 2021, even 20, uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2020, up to 2023. Okay, so that, that there are also uh, instances that uh, it would be better to do cost averaging, especially the PSI or the market swap. However, um, as Misha said, there is also a lot of opportunities right now in our market, given our GDP, our PE ratio, and all the macroeconomic uh, factors that would contribute to our economic growth. 
So definitely you would still want to put up the difference in how the cost averaging may be different from investing or time investment. Okay, so I hope that gives us a better insight on uh, how we are going to accumulate or how we're going to invest in the PSEI or in the first natural exchange rate. And with that, I'd like to thank um, Tara for inviting us. So I'll turn you over back, Tara. Thank you, Ms. Ruth. Um, I'd also like to share my screen. Yeah. All right. So thank you, everyone. And also thank you to our speakers. So we have Misha and also Ms. Ruth. So later, they will be joining us for the live Q&A. But before we move to our next part of the session, again, if you have questions, especially for the features of the fund, feel free to put it sa ating Q&A button and we'll try to raise it later. So at this time, I'd like to take this opportunity as well no, to share a couple of things on behalf of First Metro Securities. All right. Again, so I'd like to uh, guide you know, on how to invest in FM ETF through First Metro Security. So uh, first is to kindly log in lang sa ating account. Again. After that, from the home page, click on the research tab in the upper left hand corner of the platform. Enter the ticker code FMETF. This will show you a profile that will help you understand the fund better. No? So before you invest, I'd like to share with you that you can also get to know more about the fund, meaning you can check out the valuation, the financials, the dividend history, the disclosures of the fund. Okay. Now, if you are very interested to invest in FMETF, just click the trade button. So once you land at the trade tab, a new order section will show if you want to buy a certain fund. After that, simply enter lang po natin yung instruction details by indicating the following details. Though so we have the ticker code, once again, FMETF under the stock, number of shares under volume, stock price and other details that you want to change or add so once you are done filling in the details a total amount will be shown for at least you get to know no, um ano yung usual process you can also see the charges breakdown to know what you are paying for together with investment so once you're okay with the total amount the buy button is easily accessible on the top right side portion of the page to confirm your instruction, you need to input your password and then click confirm. An email also will be sent to you uh, about the transaction and you can view your status under the view orders tab. So that's it. No? In just a few easy steps, you were able to invest in the fund of your choice. Actually, the whole process of buying the FM ETF is same as any listed stock. No? So if you have experience buying some stocks, Major easier na siya for you. If nonetheless, if new pa tayo sa platform, um, it's good news because we have just uploaded the mobile app and also the web navigation sa ating YouTube channel para at least mag-guide kayo na how to navigate properly our trading platform. Okay? So just like sinabi ni Ms. Ruth, no, if you're like to invest in the long run or long term, is there a simple strategy na kaya natin i-follow or implement Meron po tayong tinatawag na peso cost averaging. So all you need to do is to invest a fixed amount regularly regardless of the market trend, whether aket or bababa ang market. You can do this either twice or once a month. At the same time, um, maybe peso cost averaging is easy to follow, no? but actually it's challenging to maintain the discipline consistently. So, meron tayong VIP sa First Metro Securities where you can save yourself time and effort in growing your portfolio by automatically investing in ETFs and mutual funds through voluntary investment. So, this encourages uh, discipline investing, medyo hassle-free na rin siya kasi it provides automatic diversification. So, no need to post buy orders on your own and investments can be redeemed and sold at any time. So to, tar to get started, no? you just need to decide on three things. First is how much to invest. Second is how frequent. So maybe once or twice. Third is where to invest. Ano po yung fund na napili po natin. So lagyan lang natin yung account nanin or just fund your account. 
and the amount will be deducted automatically from your buying power on the debit date. It may be the 50th or the 30th day of the month, okay? Ayan, so for those new pa sa platform natin, and if you want to invest, no, we'd like to let you know that first Metro Securities, um, kailangan lang natin ng one account for all your investment needs, M meaning you can access the um the tablet, the laptop, and also the mobile app. And also you can all trade with the PSE stocks. We have the Real Estate Investment Trust, or REITs, Exchange Traded Funds, Mutual Funds, UITFs, and also bonds. Yeah, so for those uh would like to open an account with us, um, it's much easier compared before, no, before kasi medyo paperwork pa and then kailangan pa mag-travel. But right now, if you want to open, it's all online. You can visit our website at www.firstmetrosec.com.ph or scan this code via your mobile phone for at least you get to download the First Metrosec Go mobile app and available to the Android and also Apple devices. All you need to do is to accomplish all the forms and upload the required documents. So for faster processing of your account opening application, please use the seminar code FAMI for at least alam namin na galing po kayo dito sa webinar. Ayan. So to give you a reference on how easy it is to open an account through our mobile app, please do watch this. Trading on the go? Here's First Metrosec Go for you. Easily open your account today with this app. You can download the First Metrosec Go app through Play Store or App Store for free. If you already have it on your device, simply open the app and click Sign Up Now. Next, you need to create a user ID, agree to agree to the terms, and provide these information. Once you're done, click the link on the email verification set. Now, let's complete your account application. First, input your account information. Then, provide your user information. Next, accomplish the investor profile form. Almost there! Read and agree to the terms and conditions. Then click Agree. You will then receive your reference number through the app. Don't forget to save this number because you will need it for your initial deposit. Next, upload or take a photo of these requirements. One valid ID, three signatures and a piece of white paper, proof of address, and proof of bank account. If you're self-employed, there are additional requirements. Now let's fund your account. You can make your initial deposit through bills payment, online fund transfer, over-the-counter deposit, or remittance. The minimum 5,000 pesos or 100 US dollars can be used to invest in stocks, funds, and bonds. There is no maintaining balance required. Next, you will need to verify your identity. Simply take a photo of your ID and take a selfie. We're all set. An email confirmation will be sent to you in two to three business days. Happy trading! For more information, visit our help center at help.firstmetrosec.com.ph. All the options and convenience within your reach through International Finance's best online broker and best online trading platform for four years in a row. With First Metrosec, it's your future first.
Ayan, feel free to connect with us. Again, our website is www.firstmetrosec.com.ph and also in our social media channels um, if you want to learn more about the maybe daily market updates or for the future sessions, just search at First Metrosec. And again, for the existing clients namin, for account requests, updates, and access concern, email lang po natin ang customer service at firstmetrosec.com.ph. And lastly, for customized, gamified, and award-winning market education programs exclusively designed for your company, school, or organization, just send us a formal invite via market education at firstmetrosec.com.ph. Before we approach the end of our webinar, let's have a live Q&A with our speakers. No, You can ask questions about the presentation, EPF 101, FM ETF, and its features. Simply write them down designated Q&A section of the platform and we'll try to get through as many as possible during the allotted time. No? So for those na hindi po namin raised because of the time constraints and we'll take care of it offline na lang po. All right, let me just check on my Q&A. And for the first question, no, I think for the market updates from Richelda, where to read all of these updates. No, for first Metro Securities, again, we have social media channels. And for those our existing clients, we have mga research reports from our um tab no under the research tab. And also Miss Ruth would like uh would you like to share um uh, where they could get some information or updates from the family side? Yes, thank you, Tara. Um, we actually have our uh, market updates posted together with our um, contact me. So you can just go to www.fami.com.ph and on a monthly basis, we generate reports for our funds, including the first natural exchange traded fund. And part of that uh, contact sheet and report is an insight of what happened in the uh, past month. So, for instance, we're releasing our Fed um, fund fact sheet. So, you will have some of the insights that were shared by Misha. But uh, the good thing is that we, the uh, family also does this regular on a regular basis. So, we also have um, some of the latest numbers aside from what we post or what we include in the uh, fund fact sheet. So, you can also go to our um, Facebook account search for First Metro Asset Management and we also post um, updates there. Thank you, Ms. Ruth. Um, also, no, uh, we have next question for um, First Metro Securities. Ayan. Medyo lag lang ng konti, pero um, go lang ng go. Medyo meron tayong issues with the internet. But nonetheless, we just proceed. Okay, for this one, I'm new to FMS. Um, just open an account and use a mobile app muna where I can find or how to buy bonds. For the bonds, mom, um, actually, we're posting no, recently. Uh, we just participated with the retail treasury bonds. So for those one, actually, specialized link no? and nakalagay siya sa ating website. So, I advise that you could go sa ating website na version than our the mobile app. Okay? Okay, I think nawala ata ako. <laughs> yes, ayan. So, medyo may issues na tayo sa internet. Fernandez, we'll just food forward, no? Okay. 
Um, uh, maybe from this one, actually, my question, tayo, no. Um, maybe um some of the speakers, maybe Miss Ruth or Misha, um, with regards with FMETF, um, nagbibigay po ba siya ng dividends? I think na answer to sa presentation ni Miss Ruth. Uh, maybe she could uh share more, Miss Ruth. Uh, I can add more to that. So as per our perspectives, yes, PFM ETF has the option to give out dividends uh, with the director, uh, board of directors approval. Although uh, the, the, uh, the dividends that we usually receive, we reinvest already to the funds, which translates to higher NAVPS. Thank you, Misha. And also, next question from anonymous attendee. No, um, what is the difference when I see FM ETF close at one ten, I NAV at one ten point fifty seven thirty eight. Um, what is I N A V? NAV is uh called indicative net asset value per share. Okay, so that um ideally the uh, I NAV should be uh as close as to the last. Posted. Because remember, um, our objective is to track the performance of the PSBI. So your INAP should be really, really close to the last post device. So uh, 110 versus 110.57 is still quite close. Okay? And that's because what is the measured good damage here. Thank you, Ms. Ruth. We also have one question for first metro securities. Um, I think with regards with the reference number, no. Um, for this one, uh, I'd like you to also email customer service at firstmetrosec.com to help you assisted with this concern. Okay. And then next one, we have Sir Paul. I think he is a repeat attendee you know, for our funds mark. Uh, why is the FM ETF measured in NAVPS? That's actually a good question. Um, I'll try. I'll ask maybe and Mr. Peter can uh, provide additional insight. Okay. So as we uh explained earlier, um, FMETF is uh, a mutual fund in nature. Okay. So as a mutual fund, the uh prices of mutual funds are actually computed based on what we call the net at value per share. Okay. So next when we say net at value per share is Asset, the total asset value of the fund less the liabilities and also expenses divided by the outstanding number of shares. Okay, so that's the meaning of now PS. For the stocks, kind of like the book value. Okay, so the essence of that is in assumption that we sell all of these securities, pay all of the expenses, what would be the price per share? Okay, and that's why it's computed at uh, NAV PS, okay? But when you go to the, uh, when you trade the FMETF, and it's you select the prices, okay, that, uh, actually what you will see there in the prices are also close, okay? Um, and then at the end of the day, uh, the INAV, okay, the NAV PS will be close also to the closing price of the, um, of the FMETF. Okay. So you might be wondering how we're doing it. Okay. So essentially what just happened is that when uh, there's an investor, a new fund or new funds in, uh, infused in FETF, we just buy the same 30 stocks okay, and also considering the uh, the asset allocation. Okay. So that even if there are new funds coming in, okay, it will not change the Correct or present at allocation or stock allocation in the fund. So that's the secret to closely tracking the list. I hope I answered that. Yes, yeah. I think you already answered the question. Thank you, Miss Ruth. I think um let me see coming follow up question. Yen, um we yeah. don't have another question, no, and just Merum appreciations from our attendees. Thank you so much, Sir Paul. And that sums up our webinar. Thank you so much for all your questions from our attendees. And of course, thank you very much to our speakers. We have Miss Misha and Miss Ruth for spending their time with us. Okay. And to our attendees, we value your feedback. You can share your thoughts and experiences with us by scanning the QR code and answering our feedback form. Our chat moderator will also provide the link. 
Your input is essential in helping us improve our services and better beat your needs. We appreciate your contribution and look forward to implementing positive changes in our presentation, especially our deck and also our webinars. No? While you are answering the feedback survey, may we request some parting words from our guest speakers? No? Um, first up, Ms. Misha. Hello. Yes. Ah, yes. yes. Yeah. Ah, yes. So uh, for me, uh, in light of Women's Month, I uh, just like to impart some words for us women. So women play so many roles and sometimes we tend uh, to put more time uh, for others rather than ourselves, whether it's for work or family or friends or even household chores. So by investing in managed funds, it lets you participate in the growth of the biggest companies in the country with less efforts on the selection of stocks as well as the timing of the market. So again, as cliche as it sounds, make your money work for you. Take control of your finances, invest in your future, and more importantly, invest in yourself. So only by then you can achieve uh, financial independence. So that's it from my end. So thanks for listening in. Thank you, Ms. Misha. Actually, medyo meaningful yung message niya, no? It relates with the Women's Month. Um, Lastly, Ms. Ruth? Yeah, thank you for that, Misha, sending some hearts. I want to jump with that as well. Um, And uh, I just to support the women, our participants here, and to the men in the room, please show some support also to the women in your lives. Okay, so... What we can just impart to everyone is that as keep on saying this, the best method that you can make is actually invest in yourself. Other than investing in knowledge and skills, you should actually gain yourself first. Okay? So investing in managed funds or in passively managed funds allows you to generate income, even if you're sleeping. And this could be something that you can set aside for yourself. Say your budget is 1% or 5%. Um, of your portfolio that you are paying to yourself, to your futures. So just to cap, I want everyone to remember, please so remember your priorities and remember what matters to you the most. Okay, so remember your goals. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ruth. So another great advice, no? Hopefully, uh, we learned a lot for this session. So once again, on behalf of First Metro Securities Brokerage Corporation, I'd like to express my deepest Gratitude to our sister company, no First Metro Asset Management Incorporation, for gracing us with their time and presence. So it is truly an evening well spent together with our speakers. Thank you also to everyone who attended tonight. We sincerely hope that you learn a lot for this evening and also for the Women's Love uh, Women's Month. No, hopefully we get to empower all the ladies out there in terms of handling their finances. All right, so we hope to see you again in our future learning events because over here at First Metro Securities, we put your future first. Have a great evening, everyone. Keep safe. Thank you.